Hello, everybody, and welcome. Uh, <laughs> so we're super excited to have opportunity to be a part of this collaborators workshop and see everyone here. Um, so we just wanted to start this off by saying what this is <laughs> uh, and some of the motivation for it and um, maybe just some quick hellos um, and then we can kind of jump into things. Um, so I'm Tracy Teal. Uh, I'm currently the open source program director at our studio, formerly at the Carpentries. Um, and my co-facilitator here, Neil, I want to say hi. People hi. probably don't know who you are. <laughs> um, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully people have, have met me before. If not, wonderful to have you at this session. And um, yeah, I'm director of the Software Sustainability Institute. Um, so Neil and I over the years have been working on a lot of different projects with a lot of different projects. And we have experienced uh, between ourselves and others, uh, some of the challenges of uh, like learning leadership. Um, and especially in a research context where most people your training is in the research aspect of the job and not as much in the sort of leadership management aspect of the job. Um, and there we found there are a lot of people, us included, who want to practice leadership and management in an inclusive way um, and are trying to figure out how to do that. Um, and so we thought that one idea, given that we were steeped in carpentries, uh, would to be to develop like a, a similar kind of idea of like the instructor training or the two-day workshops that a two-day, you know, focus on the essentials, um, hands-on practical workshop to um, inclusive research leadership. Uh, and we wanted to start thinking about, you know, is this a good idea? Oh, thank you. I'll fix the link to the agenda. Um, you know, is this a good idea? And what do people think? And then also what would go in a workshop like that? Um, so that is what we wanted to talk with you about today. Um, Neil, do you have anything you want to add? Will I fix permissions on a document? Sorry, I was also trying to fix that document. Um, uh, hopefully people can see see the document with more information now. Um, but yeah, um, nothing really much more to add apart from the this has come out of conversations around I think myself and Tracy giving ourselves peer support. And part of this is, is not just how can we how can we create something that is a carpentry style or instructor training style course, but it's also about how we as a community provide the peer support relationships that we need to become good, inclusive uh, leaders. And so I think um, part of the reason why we've come along to the uh, to collaborations workshop is to really sound out some of the ideas and get feedback on where where you all think we should be going and also um, widening it out. So it's not just the two of us sitting, um, having these lovely chats and then uh, and then kind of like creating something which might, might not be useful for other people, but instead getting everyone in and on board as early as possible. Um, so, Pause there and just, so um, our agenda for today is in the document. What we're gonna do is we are going to, um, Neil and I have kind of brainstormed some ideas uh, for content for this workshop. We put them into a Padlet. Um, and so we're gonna break out into small groups, um, give you the opportunity to look through what we put in there already and then give you some time to brainstorm on um, things you think are missing or other themes that emerge um, and some small group discussion. Then we'll come back into the bigger group, um, have a couple of discussions there on the themes that emerged on how we might think about teaching this um, and how to contribute. Um, so that's how we're gonna organize this workshop. 
Um, so I am going to, so we won't do introductions in the big group. Uh, so what we'll do is when we get to your small group, um, do some quick introductions um, before you get started on working with the Padlet. And I don't know how many people do we have? I think we have uh, 19 people. So we can probably split into three groups, four groups. Okay. Let me make one more Padlet. Four groups. Four groups. Okay. Um, okay. So I am going to screen share. I'm going to show you uh, what the Padlet is going to look like and how you can engage with it. Um, and then we're going to break out into groups. And in the agenda, there will be there are links. So first, let me okay, let me share my screen. In the agenda, two of the links are the same, or did we just highlight that um, asleep? Oh, you're right. Okay, I will fix that. Okay, so can you see the a Padlet? Yes. Okay. So um, this is what this looks like. So um, Neil and I, we had these kind of um, one, five sort of themes that we felt like we kept coming back to psychological safety, um, creating clarity in work goals and professional development, research integrity, ethics, and reproducibility, accountability, um, and yourself as a leader. So, um, and they're in these kind of different colors here. Would you like me to take over just now whilst you're adding some padlets? That would be great, please do. Um, yeah. I'm gonna stop share and you share. Okay. Um, if you could keep it up just now, I'll explain a little bit more there whilst you're doing it. Is okay. that okay? Well, or... let me show how to do a card then. Okay. Okay. So what you're going to do is you will add, um, you can click on that plus on the bottom. It, you can add a card. So new card. Um, you can have the color. You can put it in a particular color. If you're, you don't need to categorize and think of ideas. So you can just make it white and then you can move it around. So that's just how you do it. Um, so, okay, so I'll stop share and make the Padlets, Neil. Okay, yeah, and so so with the Padlet, um, what we're doing is if we were all in person, this would be lots of uh, sticky notes and whiteboards and we'd be getting people to kind of generate their ideas. And we're asking you to do the same sort of thing. So we, we brainstormed these categories and some things that we think might be, um, learning topics underneath these categories. But what we're interested in finding out from you, first of all, is are there any topics that we've missed out? So what are the topics that when you heard um, inclusive research leadership uh, course, you thought, oh, I bet that's got something like this on it. Uh, and we'd like you to add those to your particular Padlet, uh, depending on which group you're in. And then also spend some time to think about whether any new themes have emerged. So are there any, is there anything up that doesn't easily categorize into those five themes that we've, we've first defined? Um, and then once we've done that, we're going to come back and have a discussion around the themes and whether people have uh, identified new themes before going on to a discussion around which of the topics you think are most important and so that we can understand how we might structure this set of material in different ways. Um, I, I do wonder, so we, we've got this set up for five minutes on brainstorming and adding new topics, and then five minutes on identifying new themes. I wonder, Tracy, if we should add five minutes as well, just for people to introduce themselves in the group. Um, but given the amount of of time we have. We are asking you to do quite a lot in quite a short amount of time. Uh, so please do keep your introductions brief and then go on to um, brainstorming your ideas. Sometimes we've found it helpful to have a period where people just do this brainstorming in parallel before you discuss a little bit. So maybe spend five minutes to put things on all um, at the same time and then spend the five minutes where you're discussing themes to also discuss any topics that people have put on and refine them. Are there any questions before we split people up into rooms? Apart from where are the padlets? Yeah, there was a, I was going to say, Neil, that there's, there's like three different versions of this 
set of padlets now the right the ones in the document that's not the notes that seem to be the ones Tracy is updating and then all the others in the old versions so uh, I put yeah, in the so, chat in the chat is yeah. the canonical oh, so perfect. use the use the links in the meeting document oh whoops I see yes I didn't put that in the other one let me put it in both I'm, I'm just doing that now Tracy okay thank you hopefully now the documents are in sync sorry this is this is the problem with having uh, multiple documents. So we might lose the chat once we are in the breakout rooms. So, so you please, can always go back. Please to refer to the, yes, the, the, the notes. So you'll have a room number, whatever your room number is, use that board number. Yes, correct. All the boards are initially identical and then you'll modify your copy um, in each room. So yes, please do, let's give 15 minutes to this activity. So get in your rooms, introduce yourself briefly, and then spend about five minutes not talking to each other, just you know, write the cards, put them on there, give everybody sp some time to um, do that, then spend uh, about five minutes discussing. Welcome back, everybody. Um, I was looking around the boards, lots of great ideas. I'm so excited. Um, so let's have a bit of a group discussion. So what we're gonna do with all these pads is Neil and I are gonna go look through them all. And there are a lot of like individual ideas kind of within the themes that were great. Um, you were kicked out from, oh. <laughs> too many ideas, Alex. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, we'll look through and like for the individual cards um, and kind of like help bring that together for as the curriculum develops. Um, but we wanted to hear in kind of this bigger setting, you know, um, back to that, like, now that you've had a chance to kind of think about what this could look like, does, does this kind of training seem like something useful for you current you, past you, or people you're working with. Um, and then um, new themes that seemed like they emerged. So, I, and I think one other thing that I heard in our session is that, yes, like we kind of like color coded these different themes, but they were all like really related. It was hard to actually know what theme. <laughs> things went in. Um, so uh, I think that that is, uh, that's fine. So uh, perfect. We have a couple of raised hands. Let's start with Emma. Just checking. We've got two Emmas here, I think. Emma oh, Rand. Emma. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, first thing I wanted to say is I think you've done a really good job so far. So when you went in, you've actually, everything that I came before I'd looked at the Padlet thinking of was pretty much there already. So yeah, I think it already looks really good. Oh, that's great. Good. We've got Jasper's hand and then James as well. I think it was really funny for us because we ended up adding very similar things, looking at our past and like dysfunctional organizations and what we would like to see done better. And that was like represented through so many things like uh, psychological safety and minority support and like getting out of the way sometimes and all those yeah it was it was an interesting exercise for sure and especially since since we started with the uh, quiet part at the beginning it was very like yeah it was nice great did you feel like there was some something you said I felt like wasn't necessarily represented in what was written already? Did your group come up with like kind of any themes mm -hmm. we hadn't touched on yet? Jasper, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I think you didn't really touch on hiring people, hiring diverse teams, minorities. Yep. Um, okay. So also, um, I don't think it's on our board specifically explicitly but um with psychological safety and i think also physical safety especially in f places that do field work you have like a lot of lgbtqia 
issues that kind of come into that. So having some sensitivity training in that aspect that you can't send everyone to in field work to the Oman or the US even uh, is very valuable and something that a lot of people have to learn. Yeah. Thanks, Ed. That's a great, great topic. James? Hey. Um, thank you so much. Um, I think this is really useful and um, it's a, yeah, so many things in there that I identified with in terms of things that I either figured out along the way or learned from peers and things like that, which is fantastic. I think one of the things that was in my mind immediately when I started looking at was sort of how this intersects with the kind of official versions of these things that our institutions provide um, and the official guidances that um, people will encounter and the, the role this has in and alongside those things, given that some of those, particularly given that we have um, different national approaches to employment law and different institutional contexts in which certain types of activities are encouraged or not and things like that. And so I think there's a, there's obviously going to be a balance to struck there, but there's so many kind of, I think one of the things our group added was like not forgetting the basics. And in a way, a lot of this is the kind of the, kind of the, the good person, good leadership basics that institutions often forget to tell you about when they're trying to promote their latest agenda or their newest management toolkit, things like that. So yeah, thank you, it's really great. Thanks. Yeah, the, the hiring um, one is one I saw across a few boards um, that hadn't been there. Um, hiring uh, diverse talent, hiring, building a team. I mean, that's definitely one that I saw across a few different boards. Um, Sarah. Didn't get onto a board because I just thought about it now listening. Um, in the same way that you might want to like align this with like what you might come across in institutions, you might also want to think about what, how do you lead like an open source team? So people who are, um, who might not be your direct employees, but are more collaborators, they might be more spread out as well. And that requires a whole other set of skills like time zone management and, and all that sort of stuff as well. Um, because I think that's where I've got like a lot of my leadership skills have been um, in open source communities as well. So I think that will be a valuable topic to discuss. Thanks. Yeah, I just added that as a card on one of the boards. Uh, we'll do Jesper and Mark, and then we'll go on to our next set of questions. Jesper. I'll try not to hog, but uh, interestingly, there was no collaboration aspect on these boards, um, which is ironic on a collaboration workshop. But uh, the thing that I actually wanted to say, because Sarah put that really on our board, which makes a lot of sense, um, dealing with a dysfunctional um, uh, uh, institution, um, which is such a common theme, like universities are often very dysfunctional. So how do you shield your uh, minions from that? Like, how do you keep them safe from the institution actually? Interesting. I love that we missed collaboration. This is why you do these things. Some things are just so like inherent that you don't even think to write them down. Uh, all right, I'm gonna add Meg too. So Mark, Meg, then really that's it. Next question, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, it was just um, somebody else mentioned it as well about hiring about diverse teams. And actually it was something that I didn't put on our board, but I didn't think about it, is that often, I think people are often um, expected with recruitment training to recruit the best person for the job not the best addition to the team and often that's quite a big important difference especially if you want to build a really good team versus having just a bunch of really good individuals and i don't know if that's covered anywhere great great point fits in with that team building theme meg i will just add to jasper's comment about dysfunctional institutions sometimes new leaders don't know if they are alone in their own institutional dysfunction. And so they may not be likely to share with others, hey, I think something's weird happening at my institution. Do you have that? So if there's a way for leaders to build trust with one another 
to be open about what challenges they face. We have great networks, but really like how do we allow people to share more openly about whether their institution is dysfunctional or not? Thank you. Thanks. I don't know about that section on your dysfunctional organization. Um, it'll be a, a thought experiment component. Um, great. This is, I love all these ideas. Um, and we're, you know, we're just getting started on this. So it's great to, to hear all these things and we'll incorporate them and talk about, you know, what next um, after this. Um, so the other thing that we wanted to get feedback on is, okay, we, you know, develop this curriculum, we'll, we'll start, you know, we'll talk about how we could continue to do that. But ultimately, you know, this curriculum needs to be delivered. Um, it certainly, you know, the intent would be, it'd be like Carpentry's content, it'd be CC BY, hosted somewhere, um, and that already has a lot of value. But I think what we've all seen um, in our teaching experiences is that it, it's important to also have it delivered to create the space to learn together, especially on a topic like this, <laughs> sort of what Meg just mentioned as well. Um, how would we think about, um, <laughs> about delivering this? Um, and, you know, one, you know, kind of thoughts, but maybe more importantly is, like, would you feel comfortable <laughs> delivering this? Um, you know, if you had a curriculum, do you feel like you could deliver this or what would you want to learn more about or get trained on in order to be able to deliver this, Sarah? Just being asked, do you feel comfortable being able to deliver this has reminded me of another card we need to put on the Padlet, which is dealing with imposter syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, I think comfortable and confident are also maybe two different things is like, uh, I, I'm not going to go actually go for confident ever. You know, I don't know that I've ever been confident to teach anything, honestly. <laughs> Have I gotten more comfortable with my lack of confidence? Probably. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, uh, I think that's, that's a good card to add. Um, but also, yeah, that distinction between like, what would it take for me to feel comfortable delivering it? Not as like a sage on a stage, I'm the expert, but to help, you know, guide a set of people through this content in this, it's sort of in the same way as like Carpentry's instructor training or teaching a workshop. Those that you're not asking people to be experts in those, but to help facilitate learning. Uh, James. The first thing I was thinking when you asked that question was that um, one of the things that sort of Carpentry's training kind of um, requires you is not to fall back on your own experiences and sort of adapt it towards what you know. And I think one of the things I would, when people ask me about sort of management or whatever, or experiences like leadership, you tend to sort of drift into telling people about things you've done or things you've experienced or things you've seen. And I think I'd need to feel confident to not fall back on things I know because I think it feels to me like what you're trying to do here is, is develop something that maybe does a little bit draw on individuals experience and knowledges, but wouldn't sort of drift towards them just telling a group of people what they did in a certain situation or what they think is the best thing to do. Um, and I'm not sure I'd feel confident about, about doing that because I need to feel I knew enough about kind of the underlying sort of theory and best practice that I'm sort of espousing, if you see me particularly if people ask questions. I feel if someone asks a question about something to do with command line stuff, I'd feel more confident sort of trying to figure out for them what the answer to their specific question that's not on the course might be. But with some of this, I'd be, I'd want to not just tell my experience as a response you sent me. And I feel like um, that would that would be yeah. a, a barrier to me. Yeah, that's a good, uh, would be a good thing to emphasize in any preparation, Lisana. Yeah, in line and also opposite to what Jason James just said. Um, I, uh, to me, it depends on how the training would be presented to trainees, meaning 
uh, would it uh, be advertised as something that a collection of uh, leaders, experts um, put together? Or would it be more like, this is our experience, this is um, a collection of lessons that we learn through our own practice and we would like to share it? Because in the second case, I would feel more confident in, in sharing them. Thanks, great. Uh, we'll spend just about four more minutes on this topic and then talk about uh, next steps. Malvika. Yeah, so I have not been part of discussions looking at Padlet. I was also thinking about our different training workshop that we've already been to and often half of them don't sound relevant to what I want to learn. Um, so I was thinking a lot around, can we think about modularity of how these topics are presented? So any leadership team can decide together, these are the skills that we need in our team right now. Let's, let's do a training for ourselves. And maybe six months down the line, we want to select a different set of uh, points. So literally thinking exactly in terms of the Carpentries episodes, but a bit more flexibility around how we pull in. Yeah, great point. Sarah. Just jamming a little bit on what James was saying about uh, giving an authoritative answer um, versus falling back on what you already know got me sort of thinking about like a teacher versus a mentor versus a coach and like I'm wondering actually is if the people delivering these trainings should maybe they shouldn't be like a teacher this is the answer or maybe it should be more of like either a mentor or a coaching thing and like just being the person who asked the questions of the people the trainees and um get and sort of like letting them work to their way or like being like actually this is my experience this worked or this didn't work and it being more of a I think that has the benefit of bringing your trainees closer to you as like as a human and admitting that this is hard versus like this is the textbook answer to what you do in this situation it feels a bit clinical so I'm wondering if there's like scope for the workshop leaders to take a slightly less traditional role as like more of a mentor and or coach there. Nice, like coach or facilitator kind of, yeah, nice. Laura? Oops. Sorry, can't deal with the mute button. Um, I was gonna make a similar point to, to Sarah, I think, um, and say that possibly this might work better as a sort of peer group, um, a sort of meeting or support group meeting in some ways um, and also to note that um, some of the topics are going to uh, be a very close to employment law and um, that's going to be different in different countries and probably a lot of people wouldn't feel comfortable delivering trainings on that so that's something you might want to sort of bring in a, an employment law expert or an HR expert to support on that. Yeah. Yo. Seems that Laura and Sarah and I had similar ideas because I was also going to react to James and just say, actually, it the, the, the sounds like there's an individualized element here. Um, I mean, I was going to suggest up a follow up half hour or hour session, uh, one on one with someone who could offer personal advice around things or maybe even multiple sessions, because this is the sort of thing that as time goes on, you're going to encounter new challenges that worry you. David. One of the things I haven't heard yet is uh, how in the carpentries you learn by doing. So I suppose that this workshop, it will be something like others that I've done in coaching or in, in acting where you actually do the thing and you see how it's going. And um, yeah, if that's done, then it's great. I love it. Awesome. That is a great segue into the what next topic. Um, <clears throat> and so we have some notes in the um, in the document there um, about what next. Uh, so some of these are, um, I don't know, there's a lot of ideas. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about one, maybe Neil. Too. So one of the ideas we had as an outcome from this was there's these sprints, right, Neil, at the end of this. Um, and so we thought that a part of this curriculum would be like what you just said, David, that you would have um, 
scenarios that you would go through. So the exercises here would be like, here's a scenario and you practice with another person, something like conflict resolution or delivering feedback. Um, and so one thing we thought that could be useful for the sprint workshop is rather than trying to write a bunch of curriculum is coming up with example scenarios um, that could be used in exercises uh, for content like this, um, as well as be a seed for the kinds of conversations you're thinking that you need to have or problems you need to solve that could also help inform, you know, what kind of curriculum. Um, so I don't, you know, maybe you want to speak to this print idea. Yeah, it, it was something that um, I was going to propose for the hackathon part of the collaborations workshop was, uh, and it, it's great that earlier in this, this session, someone came up with the, yeah, Maybe we need the good and the bad scenarios so that we can we can get people to contrast. So that yeah, uh, we would propose something that would use a, a particular format, um, which we can show when we're pitching for this to collect some of these scenarios and get people to develop them over the course of the, the hack day. Yeah, and I put a, a link in the chat um, of like how we were thinking about scenarios that started kind of this. Book. But then, um, yeah. yeah, go ahead, Neil. Um, but then, yeah, the, we're also interested in finding out how people might want to contribute to this. So it does, it does feel like uh, there is, there's a lot of um, interest in some of these topics, and there's been a lot of ideas expressed for different ways in which they could be organized um, and things that need to be taken into consideration. So the question for us, I think, now is, is what what do we do next? And there are other there are other bits and pieces here from doing longer sprints, similar to book sprints, or um, getting people in to develop or review content that we were interested in getting your ideas from. So so it's like how should we take this forward next into the community? You you've been the like the early um, testers of whether this is a is a feasible idea and a viable idea. So then, yeah, what what would you suggest we do next in terms of steps? Apart from a spa. So we'll, we'll look to booking the spa. That's a clear, that's a clear one, but um, uh, yeah. I'll be good. Uh, so I, I am saying this because this is something that we are actually thinking a lot about um, as a team of people who have just learned to be leaders of communities. There are skills that we obviously lack and we really want to gain an understanding of. I wonder if you if you or us can reach out to different teams who are thinking about different topics from this particular list of ideas and they could start working on based on their personal experiences. Maybe it's a, a lot more long time taking than the sprint itself, but I would say it's more experiential and it would have real world scenario integrated into it. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm I'm trying to take some notes as well. I, I just say I also just saved the chat, Neil. So many good Excellent. ideas in there, including the <laughs> what the Dungeons and Dragons version of this curriculum. Yeah, um. <laughs> good. it's good to have a bit of randomness. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of different delivery strategies. I like it. <laughs> we we should get just get a really good um, a really good uh, games um, person to lead scenarios for us or create a rule book. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so one is just, I think, you know, I'll continue conversation on this. Um, but also a few people have mentioned the peer network aspect of us. And I think that's something that, you know, Neil and I has really resonated for us as well. And we always see as being important. I think as you move up and like move into leadership positions in your career, you actually have fewer peers um, often. And so your peers are not like the people in your lab. They are leaders of other labs. Um, and so it can be a little bit harder to find those peer networks. Um, so if there is a, um, oh, yes, Malvika, please. Let's do that. <laughs> um, and if there is already this, uh, the Slack for this event, maybe we could create a channel um, for this where so that we can continue this discussion. Um, and Neil and I will chat about some things and kind of try to come back with some ideas. Um, but also, you know, you can use that channel as an opportunity to say like, hey, I have 
this thing I'm thinking through, could anybody hop on a call with me for 15 minutes? I'd love to get your thoughts. Um, that like, feel free to use it that way too. Also as kind of a pilot to say like, hey, how would this go if we had this kind of network? What, you know, what could that look like? Um, and we've had a little, you know, we don't all know each other. <laughs> we've had a, a little bit of an opportunity to build a little bit of like trust and relationships here. Um, but that's always an important part of those too. So, um, we know you're not going to like, feel like you're going to post everything in this channel, but yeah, what are ways we could use something like that? Um, yes. Thanks Malvika for following up on this and Neil will follow up on the sprint. Yes, Neil. Yep. So yep. I would do that tomorrow. Okay. Um, so we just want to conclude with a lot of gratitude. Um, thank you so much for coming to this session. We weren't sure if and it would be interesting. Uh, we're excited about your excitement and the ideas you already have. And um, yeah, the idea, you know, that this is hard and important work and we're in it together and it's just been a lot being all here together. Neil, you wanna wrap up with anything? Just to say thank you to everyone who's uh, who's helped and uh, also to Alex for helping as the host yes. of the session. Thank you. All right, take care everybody. Thank you. Thanks very much everyone. Um, Bye. See you in the main session.